ultimate deck build is finally done. Well, as much of a project is ever really fully done. There's still lots of odds and ends that I wanna do. If I come across another really fun idea, then of course I will make a video of it and show you the improvements that I do. But for now, I am calling this series a wrap. Lots of people have seen it in person and online. Y'all have left comments, questions, and great suggestions. In this video, I'm gonna go over the best features of my deck. Not only my favorites, but also what other people liked best. If you have not seen the series, I have videos covering every single thing on this. So be sure to check them out if you wanna dive into one topic or another. Of course, there are links for you down below. thing people really notice is the tea box where there is no railing. It looks dangerous, but there actually is railing. But I made it removable because the original purpose of this entire build was to provide me a tea box platform where I could hit golf balls across my yard. The removable railing is probably my favorite feature because it not only allows me to hit the golf balls, but it's just such a cool thing that I've never seen before. But another cool thing about the railing is I used the Titan system, which was a new to me product, but it has these awesome snap-in balusters. They're fast and easy to install and even easier to remove for refinishing. I didn't show this in my railing video, but I not only did the entire railing on the deck with this Titan system, but I also updated the entire railing system on the top story of my house in order to match. I'll tell you this, I would not have messed with reworking my upstairs railing if the system were not as quick and easy as this. So I definitely think that this railing system is a game changer. Another feature everybody seems to notice is the stock tank pool. Now, most people build a deck to match the height of a pool. I don't know if this is a Texas thing or if it's growing nationwide yet, but I personally love the stock tank pool trend. For me, it's just the right amount of pool. Now, most people have a deck that isn't eight feet off the ground, but since I'm dealing with such a dramatic slope, I needed to raise my pool up. So I had to build a platform that could support two tons of water four feet above the ground. It might look difficult or complicated, but it was incredibly simple. Everyone who walks up to the deck comments on the horizontal skirting I did. It is really striking, but truly it's just one by eight boards. Lots and lots of one by eight boards. But a big part of the appeal is that all the exposed parts of the deck is Western Red Cedar. Y'all have seen me use Western Red on plenty of my outdoor patio furniture projects, but doing it on such a large area just really showcases how beautiful this wood is. But add on the extra bonus that Western Red Cedar naturally comes with rot, insect, and fungus resistant qualities, and it just became the perfect choice whenever I was trying to decide what to build my deck out of. Now that the entire thing is done, I am so glad that it's built out of Western Red Cedar. I just think it's truly stunning. I like to joke that my deck has an HVA system, which is kind of true. Here's what I mean. For cooling, I have a portacool evaporative cooler on the deck. In my opinion, a portacool is a must have if you're trying to enjoy an outdoor environment in the summers of Texas or anywhere else that has a warm climate like us. It's mobile so it can easily go wherever your grouping is. It uses very little electricity and water, but it blasts a cool breeze across my deck. I can easily wheel this over and point it at me whenever I'm hitting golf balls, or if I'm entertaining, then I can move it back over and point it towards the crowd sitting at the table. However, it's worth noting that when we were building the deck, the second it got hot, this thing was down there on the job site, keeping us cool as we were working. So just note that this thing is good for inside, outside, on a job site, and a social setting. Then talking about the opposite for heating, I have a fire pit. Everyone's first reaction is, hey, you can't put that on a deck. But relax, Solo Stove has that all figured out. You can set their fire pits right on a wooden deck so that you don't have to build a separate patio area to enjoy a fire. And their smokeless design really is smokeless. So people can sit on all sides without those watering eyes. Solo Stove fire pits come in all different sizes, but even the largest one is easy to tote around. I also picked up a couple of their Mesa stoves for mini tabletop marshmallow roasts.
Those are the big standout features that people definitely notice about the deck when they see it. But there are other features that they don't notice because they're not intended to. For example, you've probably noticed that many decks feel bouncy. They are plenty strong and they're not going to collapse, but when somebody walks across them, glasses rattle and everybody feels that somebody is walking. And that's because most decks are built to minimum load requirements. For a more solid feel, you can upsize your joists or go with 16 inch joist spacing rather than 24 inches, which is what I did. And I'll tell you this, it is more expensive, it is a little bit more time consuming, but my deck feels rock solid and the extra cost was less than $200. And to keep my deck solid forever, I protected my post with post saver sleeves. This whole project began because the original post supporting my porch was rotting away. And yes, treated lumber can rot. Every single post on my house had to be replaced and I never want to deal with that nightmare again. So I always use post saver sleeves to lock out the moisture and air that feeds the rot. Another thing nobody notices until I show them is the deck drawers. When I pull out one and show off the huge storage space, the typical reaction is a laugh, but then it's followed up with, I'm gonna make me a few of those. Then for even more storage, I basically built a shed under the highest part of my deck. I camouflage this area by making the big large doors just look like the skirting is wrapping around. But this gives me full access to the highest part of the deck, which allows me to store my mower and my electric wheelbarrow and any of the other yard tools that I want out of my garage. If you wanna do this, I highly recommend a under deck drainage system. There's almost no point on using the underside of your deck for storage if it's not watertight. I showed viewers how to do a watertight storage solution in two different ways. One that goes in between the joists before the decking goes on, and another one that works with an existing deck. Almost nobody thinks about plumbing or electrical when planning a deck, but a deck is a great opportunity to add in conveniences. Personally, I gave myself two more outdoor spigots which was really easy with PEX plumbing lines. If you live in a cold climate, don't worry, you can easily add a valve in a low spot to drain down the whole system before winter. Then for electrical, I added in outlets above the deck and in the storage space below. The key here is to use UF cable, which is made for outdoor and watertight exterior junction boxes. With both plumbing and electrical, here's my best advice. Yes, you can absolutely do it later, but if you think about it before and do it before the decking goes down, you're gonna save yourself sore knees and a few head bruises. Okay, and finally, can we talk about golf now? Did I say the railing was my favorite part? The tee box, the whole tee box is my favorite part. I love it, it is so much fun. The number one question I get asked about the tee box is, how do you get the balls back? Well, I pick them up. I've actually set out two different targets at 50 and 60 yards, so nobody can hit more than a wedge hitting in that direction. So all of the balls are kind of confined to one area, and then I just take an evening walk and pick up the balls. I personally find it relaxing. But to actually hit the full range of clubs, I actually put up a net and hit into the net. And this way I can put up a golf simulator. And then I even installed the television in order to show me the readout. And then I can play 18 holes or I can just hit the driving range and practice. It is in my plan to put a really swanky, cool, retractable net up. And yes, when I get the details figured out, I'll make a video of it and bring you guys along. By the way, if you are a golfer, then I have designed some golf products, a pencil holder, I'm now doing a custom hole-in-one plaques for people, if you've been lucky enough to get a hole-in-one, and then even a product that I just came up with so that I could track my own progress, it is a best round scorekeeper to where it will display your lowest round, whether that be in the triple digits or double digits, then it even has a card holder in the back. If you wanna check out some of the golf products that I'm making, then I will leave you a link. I don't know if it took four or five months for all of this to come together between the planning and then gathering of materials and then of course coordinating in order to, to film it and then bring you guys along, but it is so rewarding to be able to utilize the thing that I thought of eight months ago.
get to sit on it, get to hit golf balls, get to sit in the pool. It's just really, really rewarding and awesome. I love reading all of y'all's comments. I'm so glad that y'all have enjoyed this series and stay tuned because I definitely will have a few more projects on the deck. Obviously, I'm not good at sitting still, so more, more like it to come. Thank you for all of your support, guys. It means the world to me. I'm gonna get choked up if I don't get off here. Uh, I'll see you on my next video. How about that? <laughs>